Acting Deputy Homeland Security Secretary Ken Cuccinelli was run out of a bar by Maryland's former Democratic Governor Martin O'Malley. Now, O'Malley hounded him for carrying out Trump's immigration policies. Well, Mr. Cuccinelli responded, calling it, quote, sad and shocking, unquote. And guess what? Ken Cuccinelli is with us on the phone. Mr. Secretary, thank you so much. I read this story twice because I didn't believe it the first time. Um, but just if you could <laughs> explain to me how you came under attack and, and how did you react to that? Well, first of all, I did not leave the pub. Okay. I went and got my beer. <laughs> Good man. And I stayed right there. But, uh, yeah, that would be giving in to juvenile terrorism on the part of Martin O'Malley. Mm. So uh, every night before Thanksgiving, all of us who graduate from Gonzaga High School near Union Station in D.C., including Martin O'Malley and myself, um, have an alumni event. And a lot of us go to the Dubliner beforehand, which is where I went, walked over to one of the bars in the pub and uh, started hearing, like, screaming and cussing behind me and uh, didn't didn't think much of it off the bat and then turned to look and see what was going on. And there is the former governor of Maryland, veins bulging out of his neck, screaming and cussing at me um, and the president and whatever else he could think of. Mm. And um, as I was going to get my Guinness and uh, I just sort of shook my head and went over to that particular bar, which unfortunately they closed down the moment. So I had to go somewhere else in the pub to get my Guinness. But as I was working to walk away, others of his friends had taken up the the cheers, which we can't repeat because of FCC rules, um, uh, you know, directed at me. Occasionally, he made immigration policy comments, which my personal favorite was about the 2014 cages and uh, his <laughs> assertion that we were using those in this administration, which, of course, were not. I reminded him that President Obama bought those cages right. and used them, and he didn't really appreciate <laughs> pesky little facts like that getting in the way of his Jameson. And um, uh, and he had some other comments, got, got right in my face, like literally inches from my nose, bumping up on me and oh. um, invited me to take a swing at him. Oh. And uh, at I'm which sure point I tempting. said, Martin. <laughs> oh, it was very tempting. Of course it was tempting, but, but it was never a serious consideration. Mm. Uh, you know, and I at that point, I, I literally said to him, Martin, one of us is going to have to rise above this, and it's obviously not going to be you. <laughs> uh, good line. And um, interestingly, at that point, uh, a guy I'd served with in the Virginia General Assembly, a Democrat, a friend of mine, Steve Shannon, who I ran against for attorney general in 2009, who I didn't realize was there, um, who also spent a year at Gonzaga for his family in Chicago, poked mm. his head in between us in what looked like a pretty clear effort to de-escalate or to sort of separate Martin from his screaming, cussing fit. Say, hey, Ken, how you doing? How's the family? All that kind of thing, which was, <laughs> I thought, very wise of him. And, um, you know, so so it isn't every Democrat that's like this. But I will say this sort of Antifa-like tactics yes. you saw with Sarah Sanders, Ted Cruz, et cetera. And like I said, I wasn't going to leave the pub but but uh, and didn't. And when I went to the other side and actually found my classmates and got my Guinness, I, I learned that they could all across the pub, and we're talking like around the corner from a wall. Yeah, they were hearing him screaming and yelling, not really knowing what was going on. But uh. but um, I, I think Martin would like to play it today, like he was a cool, calm assessor <laughs> of uh, of Trump immigration policy, and the president look has been very aggressive in the the failure of Congress to act. And this is the kind of response we get. Instead of right. constructive participation, people like Martin scream, and they, they come right up to the edge of violence. And, of course, some of them actually cross that line. And I think Martin was pretty tempted himself. Have you heard, and, from, uh, uh, that, have you you heard know, from Mr. O'Malley at all uh, uh, oh, with no. some sort of an apology? No, no Martin, Martin isn't going to apologize. Mm. Martin was out of control, and he believed what he was cussing. And, um, you know started in on my, uh, you know, he dragged everything in there, not just me and the president. He started in on my Italian grandparents. Oh, my that goodness. Was interesting. Yeah, that was a joy. Um, and, uh, and, and like I said, you know, physically right in my face, finger, finger in the chest kind of thing, bumping yeah. up on me. And, and, uh, and he obviously wanted to fight since he invited me to right. take a swing at him.
But, uh, you know, that's that's the level of behavior. He doesn't right. have anything constructive to say. No, mind you, this is a guy who in the Democrat Party thought he could be president. <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, but that was, you know, that was a joke for everyone except Martin O'Malley at all points in time. Well, um, you know. Well, it's, I think, uh, yeah. it's sad and pathetic, and I'm glad it, we have Larry Hogan in Maryland and not Martin O'Malley. Yeah, it's a sad commentary on where we are right now, but uh, the good news is, Ken, you didn't give up on your Guinness, and you came out of it Hell just no, fine. no, absolutely not. <laughs> Man after my own heart. Never. Ken Cuccinelli, thank out you so much. Out of my cold, dead hands. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, I hear you. Ken, thank you so much for calling in. We appreciate hey, it. Hey, you guys, have a good day. You too, thank you. All right, Westbrook.